Hi, I'm Sterling Perrin with Heavy Reading, and I'm here today with Sam Bucci. Sam's the head of the IP Optical Networks Business Unit, as well as operations with Ribbon. Hi, Sam. Good to see you. Good to talk to you. Hi, Sterling. Good to see you and talk to you as well. Been a, been a busy year. Um, so, yeah, let's get right into it. You know, some of the major trends that I'm looking at in, in my research as I look at over the past year and what's coming up, open uh, optical networks, automation, disaggregation, including um, a lot of focus on coherent pluggables, as well as IP and optical convergence. I would say kind of those are the, the main things keeping me busy. I know Ribbon's involved in all of those, and you guys have this concept uh, called IP Wave, which touches on many, if not all of those uh, areas. Can you just give a brief explanation for, of, of what is IP Wave exactly? Oh, absolutely, and it does entirely. Um, um, thread through many of the uh, the major threads that you've uh, you've highlighted for sure. Um, you know, certainly there's there's a lot of of, of network evolution going on out there. Five G, uh, fiber rollout, um, applications that are gravitating towards the cloud and so on, are really all contributing to a a, a need to transform the network. Uh, there's there's a lot of complexity that's involved in doing that. And what IP Wave is really is is our solution um, to meet the new network vision. So it gives the service providers the, the agility they need in a, in a highly dynamic environment and with support for increased innovation velocity and network optimization across IP and optical. Why, so right, so definitely hitting on, on, on several of those. Um, you know, want to maybe kind of take some of these concepts one by one and, and you can, you know, kind of uh, feedback to IP wave as, as appropriate. Um, but one of the things that my current research project right now is focused quite a bit on, on transport automation, major trend, very high percentage of network operators saying it's critical for their, their success. Uh, I'm sure you're seeing the same thing. Um, you know, so how does uh, IP wave uh, automation fit into ribbon and why, why, uh, why is it so important to uh, network operators right now? Well, I think perhaps to, to answer the second question first, um, you know, given the increase in complexity of uh, the networks, and at the same time, given the, um, the transformation that uh, the operators uh, need to undergo, not just on the networks, but also on the business side, uh, in order to be able to get the, the financial results that they need, uh, automation is a key element. Um, and I think the reality is that automation does has faced many challenges. Uh, there's deep operational complexity that goes into uh, managing some of the networks. There's ad hoc processes, uh, multi-vendor nature of networks. And then there's of course, organizational issues inside operators and so on. What we're doing at Ribbon is essentially um, providing a framework that our customers can use to cross the automation divide. That is to go from where they are today, which is mainly um, maybe more ad hoc process driven approaches to uh, controlling, uh, managing uh, and delivering services across their network um, to an implementation of automation across a lot of practical steps. So there are three main elements to form our design approach for something we call our Muse cloud native software defined networking platform. Um, <clears throat> and they are a, a cloud native. So in other words, provide our customers a, a modern and flexible containerized software infrastructure that they can quickly use to spin up applications, spin down and so on. Uh, an automation engine that has uh, a low code, simple interfaces that can be used for service design, node design and workflow. And then there's always a need, no matter what the technology happens to be, to customize that technology to fit into the needs of uh, a service provider. And so we have a number of uh, professional services folks that we've, uh, we've put together that utilize decades of experience that we have in building networks to uh, you know, create a DevOps um, approach, a collaborative DevOps approach to creating these automation solutions. So we really want to work with our customers on practical automation. We're not, we don't want to boil the ocean, but take it pieces, one piece at a time, uh, with of course the target to get to a point where there's uh, beneficial automation, not just uh, you know put in automation for the sake of it. The uh, the cloud native is is interesting. Um, 
we're doing some research uh, in a, in this automation project, looking at that. I'm curious, uh, and you've mentioned a cloud native approach. Is it something? Um, are you finding this is something that your customers are particularly asking for, or is this something where you know you've put this forward as as the best solution, and then you kind of have to educate your customers on on why why they need it? I think it's a combination of both. It does start with us looking at this and you know, determining that it is the best answer. We want to be able to use, uh, to create engines and also tool sets uh, that utilize readily available software packages, uh, stuff that you can get um, out there, not depend on us, uh, you know, for it. Um, <clears throat> and so I think it starts with that, but then it's to educate our customers on the benefits of using these various software piece, piece parts that we've glued into our, our uh, cloud native SDM framework that they can quickly utilize to quickly spin up applications to hit the, you know, the automation goals that they haven't put in front of us. And, um, you know, we find that it gives our customers once they understand the benefits. And of course we go through the first pilot projects, so to speak, to prove in that benefit. Mm -hmm. It gives them a much more agile and flexible platform to then take on automation, further automation of their operational processes uh, largely on their own, and that's the goal here. Yep, interesting, interesting. Thing. Yeah, we're, we're definitely following this. So the, one of the other big trends I mentioned up front, open transport networks can be kind of a, a well, it is a very broad topic. For uh, for Ribbon, what, what is the open transport? Where where do, you know where does it fit best, and, and uh, what are you guys doing there? So I think open, <clears throat> first of all, we embrace open uh, networking as a necessary element of trying to reduce total cost of ownership over the long haul here, uh, pardon the pun, uh, in, uh, in optical transport. So, but we recognize that uh, customers are running brownfield networks and these networks have been uh, largely, um, you know, proprietary and in closed environments. Um, so practical open networking is the key. We're not offering just an open networking solution. We have you know at a hardware level a hybrid approach where we've um, got our own solutions, but also we've embraced white boxes, you know, as a means for starting down the path of showing that there's a business case to uh, embracing that part of the open networking. Then there's um, a number of um, let's just say standards and ecosystems that our customers want us to to fit into from an operational perspective, and so we designed our cloud native Muse. Uh, orchestration engine uh, with the southbound and northbound interfaces and the RESTful APIs that are required to allow them the flexibility to integrate various uh, components, whether it's our own or others, into that uh, framework. So, for example, on our IP routing side, uh, we created an IP Wave RNOS. This is a, it allows our routing software to operate on any certified proven hardware platform. Okay, whether it's our own or white boxes that can be fully integrated into our cloud native uh, platform. On the optical side, we support open Rotom, we support open config interfaces, uh, op uh, open optical line system, and as well as uh, uh, not just open at the control plane, but also at the data plane as much as we can so that we have uh, you know, multi-vendor book-ended solutions that we can support based on say, for example, the open Rotom MSA. So we embrace that kind of, of approach to open networking, but what guides us is the customer, ultimately is the customer's business case. Uh, we're not going to go open for the sake of being open. It's, you know, we want open networking solutions in our toolkit so we can provide the best uh, total cost of ownership solution. Yep, absolutely. Let me, um... Dig into kind of the last topic before we wrap up. IP over DWDM, uh, IP and optical convergence. It's um, it's a hot topic. It's also a, a controversial topic. What's what's Ribbon's view, and and where where are you seeing IP optical uh, convergence, IP over DWDM? Yeah, I think if you look at it from historically, there have been um, you know many challenges to implementing practical IP uh, and optical integration, something that brings, uh, really lasting benefits to, to customers. But we believe that at this point, multi-layer optimized IP optical networks are a necessity. If you really want to attack, uh, uh, reducing cost and also reducing operational complexity. So, um, really the only way to, of achieving this is for the planning and path computation engine to have detailed knowledge of both IP networking and the optical underlay. We happen to be in a position where we have both 
you know, solutions. We have IP routing solutions and we have optical solutions. And we've created a multi-layer optimization engine as part of that cloud native SDN platform that we've started to uh, work with a number of customers on creating um, greenfield IP optical solutions. So with that in mind, I'd say we embrace uh, IP over WDM in Metro specifically, um, you know, uh, access to Metro, excuse me, specifically when it comes to taking, you know, 400 gig ZR, ZR plus I should say, uh, and lower uh, uh, solutions and plugging them into routers as an example, we do embrace that. We believe that when you get out uh, further beyond that into the high performance part of the network, those two layers are, are not as integrated when it comes to integrated uh, coherent optics, but the control part of it, right? The optimization part of it still can bring benefit end to end. So we're really focused on that multi-layer optimization engine, the softer part of it, uh, uh, as much as we are on, you know, embracing 400 gig zero plus as an interface. Yeah, that's a good distinction. We, we've been looking at it this way too. IP optical convergence is kind of is the, as the umbrella term, and there's two paths which can overlap. One is the software, which we call um, management control convergence or, or um, interoperability, and then the other one is the hardware, which is where the the coherent pluggables. But yeah, they're absolutely both both part of the part of the mix, and and as you indicate, different different applications for 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 different ones. Um, I, I know we're running short on time. Um, uh, last question, um, you know, there, there's a lot of players, it's probably not a lot of players in this market, but there's certainly some very big guys that you're competing with, uh, yeah. which makes it a tough market. You guys are in a global scale in terms of where you sell. What, um, you know, when you go into customers, what, what do you give as the main differentiators to, to win business? I think it starts with, uh, we're a trusted partner to a lot of these, right? That partnership is important uh, to us. Um, um, and you know we've been doing business uh, with a lot of these customers in perhaps a separate domain uh, for decades. Okay, whether it's on the optical side, whether it's on the voice side, and so on. So a trusted partnership is important. The other thing is the economic value that we bring by embracing different uh, uh, components, different solutions uh, to to build the best possible uh, network solution. So we don't have a religion that says, "Hey, we got to go all optical, all IP," or you know, we just embrace what the best answer is, whether it's open and closed and networks or optical and IP. So it's that agility to bring in economic value and the willingness to partner with our customers on the best possible solution without any religion that, uh, you know, uh, I think is starting to, uh, to make, uh, you know, to get noticed in the market. And there's certainly a number of customers that have voted with their wallet, which ultimately is what we, uh, we're looking for. Sure, different to, and, and certainly Ribbon um, is not uh, historically an, an optically known name, but but ECI I've been dealing with for, for many decades. So yeah, you guys are not not new kids on the block by any means. Um, Sam, yeah, great seeing you, great talking uh, with you again, and really appreciate your insights today. Thank you, I appreciate the time, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon. So all right, all the best. All, right. all the best to you. Mm -hmm.